Welcome everyone to this webinar presented by the Collaborative Conservation and Adaptation Strategy Toolbox team. Uh, my name is Matt Graybaugh I'm a, and I'm a science coordinator with Fish and Wildlife Service Science Applications Program. And I'm one of the coordinators of CCAST along with Genevieve Johnson and, of Bureau of Reclamation and many others who we'll talk about a little bit during this presentation. This webinar is meant to be a brief tutorial for both contributors and reviewers to case studies that are in development for CCAST. So we're hoping that this will be a useful uh, tool for people that are either being asked to uh, complete and submit case studies for CCAST or for folks like our working groups that are involved with the peer review of case studies. So this is not going to be a full webinar on CCAST. I'll touch on a couple of the high points. Uh, but most folks on this presentation have heard us talk about CCAST quite a bit, and we have some other webinar recordings available for you guys if you'd like to be able to reference those. So with that, I'll go ahead and jump in and provide some quick details on CCAST. So the purpose of CCAST, uh, this is our current vision statement, uh, and I'll go ahead and read through it. Increased communication among the conservation community that improves our ability to tackle natural resources to challenges through the development and distribution of case studies from across North America. So what does that mean? Uh, practically, we're looking to share knowledge from case studies across, across a pretty wide range of conservation actions and research associated with conservation. We'll also be synthesizing collections of case studies on high priority conservation challenges and then use these materials as a platform to support communities of practice. And I'll talk about that a little bit more on the next slide. So this next slide is gonna be new for probably most folks on this presentation. It's a visualization that Genevieve Johnson recently put together to talk about um, the different roles the different folks play in CCAST. Uh, one thing that I meant to say up front but forgot about is that the CCAST team has expanded quite a bit in the recent months and we expect it to keep uh, doing so as we gain momentum. So part of the point of this webinar is to get new people on board um, to get a tutorial on what we're doing. So first on the left, we have three current coordinators for CCAST overall. Uh, Genevieve Johnson with Bureau of Reclamation, myself with Fish and Wildlife Service, and then a relatively new addition here is Sky Amy from New Mexico State University and the USDA Southwest Climate Hub. Then we have a few community of practice or synthesis leads. One of them is Alex Caberly, who's on the call here, and then Tanya High, who is with, um, with the Drought Learning Network as well. We have several case study authors, and there are a handful of them listed here on this slide, and then many others. Um, as this team has grown, we don't have enough room on one slide for those folks. We also have two developers and data managers. <laughs> Sorry for the hang up. That was the first invasion of my office by one of my kids. So we can edit that out later, Alex. All right, so I'll jump back in here. We also have two developers and data managers from the Bureau of Reclamation, being Adam Ricks and Jack Truax, who help us getting the case studies online. And then relevant for most folks on this call are the contributors and peer reviewers, who are the final two columns over there on the right. So that's where we'll be talking about a lot of the work for the remaining slides. So to help get us launched here, I'm going to talk just for a few minutes about the CCAST uh, development process. Um, so first, the work that's been done by the CCAST team and our partners is to identify thematic topics of highest priority for case study development. And as we do that, we also prioritize, prioritize studies, uh, case studies for development. Uh, we do that you know, internally on our project team, and we also collect case study ideas from folks that contribute those to us. Then there's a process of outreach and inreach to the contacts uh, for potential case study contributors, especially when those ideas came to us not from the contributors themselves. But then we work as a team to uh, develop the case studies um, using materials primarily that are uh, sent to us by contributors. Uh, these can include reports. Uh, we always need photographs for the case studies. And then we have um, ways to link to videos and other resources as well. 
So this slide is, are the pieces that are probably most relevant for the people on this, uh, this webinar. So the content development and the creation of the you know, final content, including the two page handout. So for content development, uh, the internal CCAS staff de develops draft case studies, and then we send those to the contributors for internal review. Um, so to get approval um, by the contributors before we send those out to anybody external. The external review teams include the CCAST working group and the non-native aquatics community of practice that many attendees of this call are on. Uh, so we send those out typically for a period of two weeks to ask for review of the draft content. Once we receive those edits back, we make the final edits to uh, the documents and also create the two page handout that we send to the contributors for approval. Uh, if we have any questions that come back from technical review, this is typically when we address those as well. So what we're gonna spend some time about for the rest of this presentation is talking about how we go from this, this mess on the left, which is a case study that is, um, has several active edits going on, and how we go from that draft content to this, which is the, you know, the front page of a two-page handout. In this case, this is for uh, Apache trout recovery in Arizona. So as we develop the case studies, as you know, we go from a document to a two-page handout, and then we also create an online application. Um, so we also have to take that same content and develop the online case study application. Um, so this is a link, this is one of the story map images for the Apache trout case study. And with that, I'm gonna take a detour from the PowerPoint presentation and we'll look at um, what this means practically for the folks that are on this call. Okay, so the case study content development process um, means working in a lot of Google Docs. Um, this, well, every case study starts with the case study authors working from this case study template, which is an active Google Doc that we use for all of our cases. There are some fairly, well, your first glimpse at this Google document and the, the draft version that I'll show you next can be confusing because there are some repetitive sections and we'll go through that a little bit. So the Google document here has various sections that we need to fill out as case study authors that then uh, reviewers have to be familiar enough to know, you know what to do with it. So that's what we're gonna talk about here. Um, so I'll skip over a couple things that, um, well, I'll go ahead and just get started. So this template will have placeholders for every section uh, that can, you know, can be moved around depending on how we do the final format for each case study. And then for every case study, we have a, every case study in every section, we have two potential versions of that content we have a version of the content that will be developed for the case study handout. And that is um, marked here by the, typically the blue words and the placeholder uh, following that. And then we have an optional additional or um, alternate section that can be used for the online case study. So uh, this is what us as CCAST authors, we work with when we, when we get started. So we take the information that is provided to us and we try to plug it into these different sections. Um, for both contributors and reviewers, you will see instructions on these different sections saying, okay, what information should go in each section? And that's the text uh, that immediately follows the header here for all of these sections. So as we, as the case study authors work on developing this, we will work on filling in all of the placeholders. The one thing I'll go ahead and say here is, depending on how we develop the content, um, the handout version versus the online content can be a little bit confusing. And I'll give you an example. Sometimes we'll have one paragraph that we use for the case study handout, uh, the handout version of the case study. And we wanna provide additional in-depth information just on the content that's in that paragraph. 
in that case, we will denote in here that it's an alternate version for the online case study. And as the uh, data developers, so as Adam and Jack develop the case study online, they will know that they should use this content instead of this content. The other option will be we have some general background information here, but we want more space to go in depth, and it's a paragraph that should be added to the case study handout version, and we'll denote that here in the text as well. So, you know, harping on this a little bit, sometimes it can be confusing because we've had reviewers look at this section, the handout version, and this section and say, hey, these say the same thing, why are you repeating information? And the reason for that is, is that those are four different versions of the case study. The next thing I'm going to do is talk just for a minute about, or give you an example of what a working version of a Google Doc looks like for a case study. So for this example, I'm gonna keep on the Apache Trout uh, project. So um, once we have a final internal, or once we have a draft internal version of the Google Doc, me being that it's been approved by the CCAST team and the contributors, we'll send out a version that will have this uh, tag at the end that is for review. And we add that when we send it out to the CCAST working group and the non-native aquatics community of practice to ask for, so that's what that denotes for us because we keep an archive of the previous versions. So uh, for people that are normally just reviewing case studies, this is what it will look like when it gets to you. It will have some, some of the notes in here still. It will have a case study reviews table that I'll talk about a little bit in a minute. And then it will have draft sections in here for all of the, yeah, it'll have draft sections in here. So um, this example, this again, Apache Trout, we have a handout version of the background and introduction. And in this case study example, we have a totally alternate version that is going to be used for the online uh, case study application. And a couple notes on this, and we'll look at the example application here in just a couple minutes. Um, but you'll see the guidance here for a word count. 80 to 90 words is typically the maximum that we can fit in this section for the two-page version of the handout. So uh, when I go here and look at the word count, uh, we have a little bit of wiggle room here, but we're looking at about 100 words for this version of the background and introduction. Online application, we have quite a bit more space, so we try to give up to about 300 words for the section uh, that is for the online version. Um, again, you will see some repeat information. Um, Apache trout found only in the waters of the White Mountains, Apache trout found only in the waters of the White Mountains. So that repetition is on purpose, and we'll look at why there in a minute. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go through some of the administration here as you go. Uh, go in and edit these case studies. Uh, the first is that we know that people are having access issues with Google Docs in the past few months, especially Department of the Interior folks. Uh, we tried to change the permission so that anybody with the link can edit. Uh, it sounds like that is work, but we're still having some issues, so we're working on resolving that still. Um, so we might have updates on that soon. We might have to migrate to Outlook, um, to, Outlook to Microsoft Word. Uh, but we'll keep you guys in the loop as that happens. The process otherwise is still gonna remain the same. So as you go through and are providing edits to the case study, the first thing we ask that you do is put your name, organization, uh, name and organization here in the review table. And what that lets us do is just document that we've had a review process for the individual case studies. Um, so if I was going to go through and make edits to this right now, I would put my name in here, affiliation, um, and then as you are working through a case study, you can either just put comments directly in this table. Um, so I'll just put an example. I can put a comment in here directly in this table, or I can go through and insert comments in the document. So um, in Google Docs to do that, you highlight and you can click this com add a comment bubble to the right, or you can click the add a comment up at the top. So if you can feel free to add as many comments as you want to this case study. Um, you can also feel free to um, edit using the suggesting mode. So in Google Docs, if you go up here to the right, you pull down this, 
and click on suggestion. And then any edits that I make here will be in the track changes version that then we can go through and edit uh, for the final version. Um, the final thing I'll say on this is we know that lots of folks access these and you're not gonna take the time to go through and put in a ton of comments and edits and that's totally fine. Um, however, we would like, again, to document that people are actually looking at the draft version. So if you go through and look, look at the case study and you say, hey, this looks good as it is, that's fine. Um, but we would really appreciate if you can put your name and affiliation in there too, just so we have that documentation for ourselves. I'm gonna delete this before I forget to delete the suggestion. A final note here on review. Um, as we go through this and as we develop the final handout and online version, we're, we know that we're gonna find additional typos and editorial stuff like that. So don't worry about that too much. What we'd really like your help reviewing is the technical information. Is the case study useful for you? Or is there additional information or details that could be added that would make this more applicable to you or make it easier for you to replicate whatever this work is for your projects? And that's kind of the level of edits that we're looking for. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna move on and to the final version of the Apache Trout case study. So that, again, this has the full review. Once we receive your comments and edits, we create a new version internally with the tag that is final. And that's typically where we make all the edits and address the, uh, the comments that you guys have provided us. When we go through, we clean up a lot of the instructions. So the background introduction, text that was here goes away. Um, and here everything then is finalized and we note some editorial things that need to be kept track of for the online version of the case study, just so that we get it right with our online content developers. So what I'm going to do quickly, and let's pick a different section than the, uh, the background. So let's talk about, let's look at project highlights as an example for this. So what I'm going to do is navigate to the Apache Trout case study on CCAST. Um, so I'm going to this application, the search by interactive word cloud, and I'm going to sort by name, uh, just because I know this one's at the end. All the way down at the bottom, working toward recovery of Apache Trout, go ahead and click on that. And this will open up the online version of the case study application. And we're gonna talk about project highlights, so I will go there. And then we'll compare that with the two-page handout version of the case study, so I'll open that as well. Okay, so going back to the final version of the case study, in the handout version of the project highlights, you can see the headings and the sections we have. Again, trying to keep it to the 130 to 150 words so that it will fit in the case study handout. So we will take this content for the handout version and make sure that it fits in the highlights, of the case study, which has been done here. Uh, you know, quick note here, sometimes we have to make final, very minor changes just to make it more concise so that it'll actually fit once we get all the sections organized. But anyway, that's, that's where those end up. So you can see the handout version, we have two different, or excuse me, three different paragraphs for the highlights. And that reflects the three different paragraphs that are here in the highlights for the handout version. Now I scrolled down to the online version of the project highlights, and you can see we have five different paragraphs, much more information, and that is reflected in here with the five different paragraphs in the project highlights. Uh, the one thing I will mention really quick is, so we take the final version of the Google, we create this draft, and then we do a final review, uh, being the CCAST team, and that's typically when we'll share it out uh, with the contributors and let them know that the case study is online. Um, but the CCAST team will still continue to go through this and just make sure that we didn't miss anything, which we almost always miss at least one thing. Um, so it can be small things like not capitalizing correctly, um, 
in this case, this case study just went online a couple weeks ago. And I noticed this morning that the URL has not been inserted here for the citation. So there's a final review that we do internally with the CCAS team, and we track those changes in a separate uh, document that we share with our case study developers. And in this case, you know, we have the case study, who made that at the date, and then please update, it, update the su suggested citation per the Google Doc. So I'll make the change in the Google Doc that needs to be reflected in the online version. So back in the final version, we have updated citation with the correct URL, um, information that needed to be added for CCAST, et cetera. So that's um, the final review. Okay. And I know I threw a lot at everybody here. Um, so what I'm going to do here is try to pause and see if anybody has questions that I could go through. And Alex, did we have any questions come in? None yet, but uh, for folks online, feel free to also type your questions in the chat box. And Alex, did you note anything as I was going through that you wanted to provide clarification on? Uh, not at the moment. Um, yeah, I don't have anything to add at the moment. Okay, well, we'll leave, we'll stay here for a couple minutes in case there are questions. Um, again, I know that was kind of a slog to get through some of the, the details for this, but we do hope it'll be helpful um, for people that are either contributors or editors as we go through. Um, so last call for questions here. One thing I'll just quickly mention, um, I've noticed in the past couple of weeks that uh, sometimes I'll, um, I'm getting an echo. I'm not sure if it's on my my end. So um, when I send out some of these case studies for review, I'll occasionally get a notification from Google that someone requested access. Well, I know that we've been having some slight access issues, but it kind of depends on um, individual Gmail accounts. So if you do try to access one of these um, case study docs and you get prompted to request access, um, you can just send me a note and I'm typically pretty quick. I can respond and um, add your email to give you access to the Google Sheets. Cool. Thanks, Alex. All right. Well, if there are no additional questions, we'll go ahead and, and call it here. I um, just want to say thank you again to those of you that willing to sit through this tutorial with us uh, for about a half hour. Um, again, this team has grown quite a bit, so I'm not taking credit for all this work. I'm trying not to. Uh, we've got several you know, partners involved in this effort, including Beer Reclamation, the Southwest Climate Hub, and the University of Arizona, who Alex works for, um, as well as Larry Fisher, uh, one of the coordinators who's, uh, I believe, also on the Zoom call. Um, so with that, uh, we don't have a master acknowledgement slide, so we'll just leave my email address up here. If you guys have any questions, anything you want to let me know. Um, and with that, I think we'll let you all go. Thanks, everyone. Hope you have a great Tuesday.